Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Venom Vlog and it is still hot as hell in this apartment. So that's why you hear the AC in the background. So I apologize for the extra noise. Um, I, you know, I try to shut my door or do something, but just not enough air is getting into this room and uh, I gotta have them probably come check that out. So I apologize for the extra noise. Uh, but for now, uh, in this episode, I wanted to just conclude the amazing Spider-Man run by Nick Spencer, uh, because we just did that fun episode, or I had fun anyway, talking about all the retcons and stuff. Um, so we're gonna break down this and we're gonna get into full spoilers. I know I have the physical copy here, but I do not have a digital code for this one. Um, I actually have a friend who's a little down on his luck right now, and he was he's going through some things, and I didn't have much to give him, so I offered him the digital code for this because I knew he was a big Spider-Man fan, and I, it helped him out. So I ended up giving it to somebody who was just like, I'm going to lose my mind, a lot's going on right now, and I, I feel like I'm going crazy, and, and I, I feel like I'm, you know, he's in a lot of pain, and he's going through a lot of health issues. So I said, well, can I do anything for you? I was like, I got this Spider-Man comic here that I'm reading. You know, would you like the digital code? So I gave it to him. So Gene, I hope you're doing well, man. Um, and, uh, you know, and I'll put a link to his GoFundMe down below in case any of you guys want to check it out. And if you have a few bucks you want to throw at him, I'll dedicate this episode to Gene and I'll put his GoFundMe down below. So definitely uh, go help a, a fellow aneurysm survivor and friend out um, if you're able to. Um, so for now, we're just going to dive into this, though. Uh, so sorry again about not giving the code out, but I'll have more codes for you guys in the future for sure. It definitely made Gene very happy to read this, and it made me happy, too. Um, so there is some short, there's one short story in the back of this that I'm going to omit from this episode because we're going to be doing more uh, Ben Riley stuff coming up, and I want to save it for that because it does involve Ben Riley. because starting with the next issue, Ben is going to be taking over as the new Spider-Man. And I also have the free comic book day issue, which also sets that up, and we'll be getting into that and talking about those stories uh, with Ben coming up very soon as well. So for now, I just want to wrap up this Nick Spencer run. And I've already talked two minutes. And this is I'm trying to not make this a long video. So this is a huge issue. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. Um, I don't know. I think it's like 96 pages maybe. But it's the epic conclusion of the Kindred Saga, as it's called on the cover. Um, and it actually starts off with, the, and by the way, major spoilers, but I haven't said that already. We're going to go through this whole whole book. Not, I'm not going to show every page, obviously, but uh, but it does start with a great uh, image here. These are pages or uh, panels from Spectacular Spider-Man 200, where Harry Osborn died saving Spider-Man. And then he wakes up, and now the book starts, and he wakes up in hell talking to Mephisto. So let me break this down for you, okay? We've talked about all the retcons and everything in the last issue. So in this episode, I just want to focus on the story that's told here. And mainly what this is, is this is a, a fight. It's between Spider-Man and Kindred, who we learn is actually not one being, but two. So there are two Kindreds, actually. And we're going to find out why. And we're going to learn. I'm going to dissect all that stuff. But that's mainly the book. It's just a battle between them. Norman Osborn and Mary Jane and Harry Osborn are stuck in the middle. But that's mainly what the book is. So the whole story is just pretty much a fight for the souls of these people involved. And the flashback, though, or the, the backstory, is that Norman Osborn at one point was low on, you know, he was basically failing at, at everything, you know, and his business was going to go under. So he was visited by Mephisto, and Mephisto offered him a deal. And he says, look, I'll make you rich, I'll make you famous, I'll give you power, um, I'll give you access to all those things, um, as long as you, you know, Give me your firstborn son. And Norman, being the dirtbag that he is, agreed. So when Harry dies in a Spectacular Spider-Man 200, he went right to Mephisto. And Mephisto was like, yep, I wish this was about you, kid. I'm sorry, you're just a pawn in all this. He goes, I actually just want your soul here because what I'm going to send in its place uh, after I make another deal, and he's talking about the deal with Spider-Man and Mary Jane that he makes during one more day. He's like, after I make that deal, I'm going to put into place all these things that you set up for me uh, because I was, a, you know, the devil on your dad's shoulder, which turned into the devil on your shoulder. Um, he goes, you set up this cloning process. You stole some of the jackal's cloning. You uh, made a lab where you were creating uh, Sarah, um, you know, the uh, Sarah and Gabriel, the two children of Norman Osborn and Gwen Stacy, which is, has been retconned. They are not the actual kids of Gwen and Norman, which is, thank God, that's retconned um, for me. I mean, what's neat is that they do it in a way where they it's not like it never happened, kind of, but that the reason why Norman thought it happened, because that news did come from Norman back in the Krasinski run, is because he was being brainwashed or, or hallucinating from Mysterio stuff, you know, that uh, that was there because of Harry. So Harry found out about the deal with the devil, found out he was going to, you know, go to hell basically and started coming up with this plan he wanted to get back at the people that damned him 
and also who killed Gwen, his friend. So he that's why he had a vendetta against his dad, Norman, and also his uh, you know his friend, Peter Parker. So that's he set out to create this whole cloning process. He downloaded his mind into a computer to basically be there and tell the children, brainwash them like through a, you know, through a database or through like Arnim Zola, the way he was in the winter soldier movie. Like he's a computer, you know, uh, creation of Harry and his mind, but he was very evil because he was hell bent. He took the goblin formula and he was hell bent on getting back at Peter and Norman. But what ended up happening is he grew his conscience back. And when Peter was about to die and his family was about to die, Harry decided to do the right thing and save everybody and then died doing it which is what happened in Spectacular Spider-Man 200. So that's what happens. And then meanwhile, um, you know, that now that he's in hell, Mephisto's like, okay, now I'm going to go back to Earth and make a deal with Peter Parker and Mary Jane, and I'm going to ask for their child, basically. I'm going to say, all right, I want you to, if you want your identity erased, if you want to go back to your life, um, then you two, I'm going to reset you the before you got married, and you're not going to get married. So I'm basically going to undo your marriage and it's going to eliminate any child that you were supposed to have. That child will now be gone. Um, and, and so he said, so do we have a deal? And they said, well, if it brings back Mary, you know, Aunt May, and if it brings back, you know, Harry and other people will make that deal. And so they do, and they sacrifice their love. And that's what happened in one more day. So in this here, we find out why Mephisto is so dang interested in Peter Parker, um, which is neat because if you remember around the time of one more day, Peter Parker got visited by God. And I know a lot of people may not like that issue. I I actually do like that issue. And I always wondered, what is the deal with that? Why would God visit Peter Parker? Um, and he mentioned, because one day there will be a, a tome or a book about you that will be kind of religious in a way, or people will look at it kind of a, in a religious way or through religious eyes. Uh, that'll be called the Book of Peter. And he goes, and because you're going to do something really great so we're going to find out what that is here in a second but before we do and before we find out why mephisto is so interested in peter because that's what dr strange wants to know he's visiting mephisto and he says i want to know the truth and mephisto says fine let's play a game i bet that my two champions the two kindreds who are right here i bet they're going to defeat peter parker break his will break his spirit and he will not do what peter parker always does which is he always gets back up this time he will not i bet you and Dr. Strange is fine. Well, I pick my two, uh, you know, champions, and I agree. I think, I, I disagree. I think Peter will get up, and if he does, even after everything you throw at him, then you lose. So Mephisto's like, fine, let's do this. So they wager, and, you know, and they have this deal going, and, they, and Mephisto says, if I win, I get Peter's soul, Mary Jane's soul, H Harry's soul stays mine, because Harry's soul is still in hell, um, and then I get your soul, Stephen Strange. And Dr. Strange says, okay, but if if I win, none of their souls get messed with. And whatever thing you put over, this cloud you put over to prevent Peter and Mary Jane from falling in love again, or you know, which is already cracking anyway throughout Nick Spencer's run, he's like, you're going to leave them alone. And he goes, all right, fine, let's do this. So Mephisto is very confident. He's rigged this game and even tells Stephen Strange, I've, I've rigged this, so you're not going to win. And Stephen's like, okay, that's fine. So when Steven says, I pick my two champions, that's when Mephisto thinks that the second champion, it's one is Peter, obviously, but he thinks Harry. He's like, all right, Harry was chosen by Stephen Strange to go in and save Peter against the two kindreds, um, who we find out are actually the twins. And so when we found out one was Harry, because a couple issues ago, they took the mask off and it was like, oh, I'm Harry Osborn. And then another one took their mask off and it was Gwen Stacy. Turns out it's neither of them. It's actually uh, Gabriel um, and Sarah, the two twins that were apparently the children of Gwen and Norman. So, uh, so it's actually them. And it's because this program that Harry put into place before his death, um, which he regretted putting into place when he sa sacrificed his life to save Peter, he said, I wish there was time to tell Peter what I did so he can go and shut the lab down. But I didn't. With my last breath, I, you know, I, I said I was going to miss him or whatever. So... He, that's that's why all that you know backup plans still went through and those clones were still created the brainwashing of norman still happened he thought he had uh, kids with gwen he tortured peter with it and all this was to torture and break peter parker's spirit because this is the guy who is now swearing an oath that he just doesn't want anyone to die he wants to be there and save everyone he possibly can um which is 
it's that's like beyond Captain America level. Uh, you know, I know Cap believes that and he wants to save as many people as possible, but Peter is doing everything he can, creating tech, doing everything um, to to do exactly that. And he's been pushing himself harder than ever before to do that during Nick Spencer's run. So I know there are people out there that don't like this run. Me personally, I've liked a lot of the stuff in it. There's been times of it where I didn't like it and I thought it dragged on, but this last issue I do dig and I think it's neat. And so, you know, with that being said, I will say like some of my favorite stuff in here was Harry Osborn. He finds out that he's a clone. He's a clone that is being that was made from the new U technology, which is the Ben Riley stuff, which we're going to get into coming up kind of briefly um, in a future episode. We'll talk more about as we talk more about Ben Riley. Um, but yeah, he kind of someone used the new U technology to bring back a version of Harry. So this is not a resurrected Harry from Mephisto. Uh, Harry's soul is still in hell, and his soul is in the balance right now. Um, but this is a clone, and he's been living on earth with uh you know with his wife and his child um this whole time ever since one more day um so yeah that's pretty crazy i didn't see that coming so but he does show up in time to help spider-man fight the kindred twins um who like i said they get revealed to be the the actual twins that were that were now we revealed were created by harry osborne i know there's a lot there's a lot to to, to digest here so i hope i'm not speaking greek to a lot of you um and those of you who are who do speak greek i hope i'm not speaking some other language to you um but uh but yeah so you know harry is this harry makes the ultimate sacrifice he's like you know i i believe in peter parker and i wish this didn't happen and kind of in a way like the old you know the real me put all this into motion and i know he regrets it and i know what he would want he would want me to stop it so this harry decides to save norman he saves his own father who still is without sin so he still seems like norman might still be a good guy going forward from here on out which I like. I think that's a really great thing to do with that character because he's done enough evil crap. And honestly, if you're going to do anything else with him now, making him, you know, without sin and, and feeling real regret and stuff, I think that's a good path to put him on. Because um, could, it could still be a path to not doing the right thing, but, you know, because he'll do bad things out of guilt probably, but I still think it's interesting to do with him. So, uh, so anyway, it's, what happens here is, like I said, Harry saves Norman and he saves Peter but at the cost of his own life. And what ends up happening is Harry once again dies saving Peter Parker, but also saving his father. And he says, you know, Dad, I'm not like you. Um, you know, you you did everything you could to ruin me and Peter. And some people say it was the Goblin formula, but I don't think it was. You're a bad person, but it doesn't mean I'm not going to do the right thing. And I'm going to be the better man. I'm going to be like my friend, Peter, who has done everything and sacrificed everything to try to help people. And, uh, and I, I no longer hate him for failing to save Gwen um, and I no longer hate you for throwing Gwen off that bridge you know he's like I'm I'm at peace and by doing that by being at peace he is able to make this sacrifice um, and it you know it, it so it sucked it sucked watching Harry die on the first page of this the original death and his very near perfect clone because that's the new you technology is like near perfection um, to see him die again it's it was heartbreaking so I you know it's, it's hard to watch but then that's when Mephisto turns to Stephen Strange and he says, you know, sorry, man, your one champion is down. So now you're just down to Peter and Stephen Strange stays quiet during the battle. And then the kindred twins, they get, you know, at first Spider-Man gets the one up on them, but then they turn the, the tide and they actually get the one up on Spider-Man and bury him under some rubble. So much like old school Spider-Man comics, there's that really great issue where Peter Parker lifts up, you know, he's like stuck underground and like all the rubble's falling on him and the pipes and stuff and the concrete. And he like, he's like thinking about Aunt May and, you know, and what Uncle Ben would do. And he uses that to, you know, push his, his spirit and his heart. And he lifts that crap, throws it off of him and goes and saves the day and saves Aunt May. What a great issue that was. And so this was kind of a callback to that. Only this time, he can't lift the rubble. He's thinking about May and Gwen and Harry and everybody, and he can't lift it. And that's when, uh, you know, Mephisto's like, oh, dear. Like, it looks like Stephen Strange, you lost. And Stephen goes, well, you know, I knew you had this rigged, so I thought I'd have to think a little bit more clever than you this time, Mephisto. And he goes, uh, and I thought I'd actually put my belief in somebody who doesn't have any powers. And he said, so uh, you thought I chose Harry Osborn as my second champion, but I didn't. I chose somebody else. And right at that moment, someone breaks through the rubble, not with superpowers, just digs through it, and pulls Peter Parker out. 
and it's Mary Jane. And I love that for me because I really hated that both her and Peter agreed to make that deal with Mephisto. No matter how Mephisto worded it or how he duped them, I still hated that it was both of them that made that deal because I thought it made them both very crappy people. So I like the redemption here where Mary Jane is the champion and she comes and lifts Peter out of the rubble. And by doing that, the kindred twins drop dead because Mephisto lost. So without, you know, with, with him losing, he doesn't have control over their rage or anger or whatever he was using them for or puppeting them with. They're now dead and so are the centipedes and all the creatures with them. I felt like this was a little haphazard, like it just kind of ended too quickly there. But I understand the, you know, the the symbolism, I guess, of, of the gesture and what's going on. So, um, so you know, we have Harry's dead. Norman, you know, goes over to hold him. And, uh, and then Peter actually stays with the twins as they die. And they're said, you know, oh, so we don't have a mom? You know, we never had a mom because then all the Mephisto and all the brainwashing is leaving them in their last moments as their their progeria or their fast aging takes over. So they look at Peter and they're like, do we really not have a mom or dad? And Peter said, no, you, you didn't. He goes, but if Gwen was around and she knew of you, she would have loved you and she would have taken good care of you. And so, uh, so you get a little closure there, I think, with Peter and Gwen and, and this twin story from Sin's past, like that nobody ever wanted brought up again, but they did. And they just made them like a new version of them, Kindred, you know, like new, new clones of them were Kindred, um, puppeted by Mephisto. So in the end, you know, Strange is like, I, I still don't get it, Mephisto. Why the fascination with Peter Parker? Like, wh why? Like, what do you care about this stupid kid from Queens? Or not stupid, but he's like, what do you care about this kid from Queens? Like, he's he's just nobody. And Mephisto says, yeah, that's what people think of a lot of, uh, you know, really uh, spectacular people or, or people that are that are truly here for a purpose. He goes, everyone thinks they're just someone from somewhere. You know, someone from Galilee. You know, like, you know, it's just that's how it is. You know, no, they're not special to most people. Um but uh, he's more than just a kid from Queens. He's like, uh, so Mephisto reveals, he goes, you know, when I meet people, Stephen, I don't just see them and the moment we're in when I meet them. I see everything about them. I see their friends. I see their loved ones. I see their children, their destinies. I see their past, what makes them tick, why they fight, why they don't fight. I see everything about them. And he goes, so when I knew of Peter Parker's existence, I saw where his, one of his paths end. Um, I see him killing, well, he doesn't tell this to Stephen Strange. He says, he's like, I just, all I'm going to say, Stephen, is I saw where his road leads and it could lead to, there's, you know, now that we've, this has ended, I don't really see everything now. So there's a couple options in front of us of where his destiny and his road actually leads. He goes, but, um, he goes, I, I know where it's going to go, but Stephen, you know, maybe I'll tell you some other time. Basically, he's like brushes him off. So he's like, just take your victory and leave. So Stephen's like, okay. So Stephen Strange leaves. And, uh, and and actually Mephisto's thinking about what he was saying to Stephen Strange. And what he reveals is that Peter Parker one day, apparently, is going to be the one who kills Mephisto. But, or, if destiny does change and things happen a little differently, possibly his daughter, who I think is Mayday Parker there, uh, who was still in continuity not in continuity like we don't really know the mc2 universe never really did it exist did it not it's a separate world whatever i love mayday parker i think she's an awesome awesome character so it seems at one point either peter parker or his child will bring the end of mephisto and that's why he wanted to make that deal with peter to break his love away from mary jane because that would break his spirit it would the thing that keeps him going every day her love for him and his love for her it's gone so that would make him weaker and now they won't ever have a child. So to Mephisto, he was like, I did it. I pretty much ensured that I will live forever, maybe, or not be killed at least in this lifetime by this kid from Queens or his, his offspring. And uh, now that's undone. So it looks like at some point, Mephisto is going to meet his end to Peter Parker or his child. And I think that's awesome. And then, and then it made me think about that issue where he met God. And I go... Well, now, it, now that makes sense why God visited Peter Parker, um, because Peter is very special, it seems. But I love that. I don't know. Other people might not like that, and so I'd love to hear your thoughts. Is that something that sounds cool to you? Because to me, I think it's freaking epic and awesome. Um, but it is just a setup. We're not going to know 
who takes the reins of that story and where it's going to go from here. Obviously, we know Peter's going to be out of commission for a while, maybe because of something that happened in this issue. We'll, we'll find out when uh, the new writers pick up the book. But at least in the end, Peter and Mary Jane, you know, go to they fall asleep next to each other. They wake up next to each other. They, he takes her out swinging and they reveal that their love is unbreakable. Um, that no matter what Mephisto tried, he, he, in the end he lost and it was because of the faith Doctor Strange had in Mary Jane and Peter's love and he put all of his faith in that and she came to his rescue so um, I thought it was cool I thought this issue was was really badass and it, it uh, I didn't get too choked up but there was a couple times where I kind of felt like alright this is for me as a Spider-Man fan this was bigger than I thought it was going to be um, and neat I mean not everything in this book I love I think some of the wrap up was a little too haphazard and quick and, and a little lazy at times and i thought it dragged at parts that it didn't need to drag at but there was a lot of information that they had put in here because they did all the retcons and everything in the, the last like 20 or 25 issues of spider-man and all the spin-offs king's ransom chameleon conspiracy like they they wrapped all that all, all that up now uh before this and this all this had to do was explain harry uh the deal with mephisto and uh who the kindred you know twins were and you know that or that the fact that they were twins and who they really were that's all this book had to do and i felt like sometimes it, it, it too much exposition and other times not enough in it, just pacing wise but otherwise i thought it was a good book um and i think this is a, a much better step for nick spencer considering a lot of people hated his captain america thing that he did which i never read <laughs> thank goodness uh because uh because when i went into this i didn't go in with that you know uh, I guess hatred for the guy uh, so I was willing to give him a chance and, and I think he did a pretty good job um, but then there are some short stories in here one by Christos Gage where Peter Parker goes to Uncle Ben's grave um, and he finds out that there was a, a guy that Uncle Ben used to try to help out who was like the neighborhood drunk I guess who had like a you know was mean to his kid and his, his wife and Ben kept trying to be patient with him kept trying to help him and the guy never got any help he shows up or just randomly at Ben's grave the same time Peter's there. And Peter's like, I don't understand. Like, why are you here? Uh, I remember you. Uncle Ben was like, you know, always try to help you. And you were a horrible person. You went to jail. And the guy said, yeah. He goes, that's why I'm here. I'm out of jail. And I'm, I've been sober for one year. And I wanted to come show Ben my one-year sobriety chip. He goes, because I think that, you know, he would have been proud of me. That even though I didn't listen to him when he was trying to help me back then that he, I hope he knows that I eventually got help and it was because he was like an angel on my shoulder all these years so I thought that was good I thought that was a nice little uh, you know very heartwarming story there um, and then we also got the complete history of Spider-Man by Sean Ryan and uh, Gustavo Corte um, in this little cartoony thing with uh, when they talk about the clone saga they talk about venom and you know everything uh, Uncle Ben they, they kind of go over the whole the whole shebang um, but the last story called Janine by Zeb Wells, uh, who I love, Zeb Wells. Uh, I know some of you aren't a Dark Origin fan for Venom. I kind of like it. I don't love it, but I, I, I defend it a little bit. Um, but he's one of the new writers on Spider-Man, and I'm so excited that he is because I liked his previous Spider-Man stuff. And he writes a story in here called Janine, but we'll have to wait for another episode before we talk about that one because it involves Ben Riley. So as Echo is drinking a bunch of water and being very loud in the background and my AC kicks, you know, keeps kicking on and off, uh, I'm going to end this episode because I've talked long enough. But let me know what you think of this. This was really fun to kind of go through and read. And I thought Nick Spencer overall did a really good job. And I know people out there will probably disagree with me on that, and that's fine. I would say his whole run I would probably give like a – maybe like a 7 out of 10, maybe a 6 or 7 out of 10, like somewhere in there. So I, like I said, I don't love his run, but I was pretty entertained for a lot of it. And then the stuff I didn't like, I really didn't like. But the stuff with Boomerang and that relationship and, and Peter Parker and Mary Jane coming back together, and even the retcons, although I don't think all of them were done very well, some of them were. And the ones that were, I appreciate the effort that went in. Um, and the ones that weren't, I, I feel like some of them still had a little effort in. But some of them did feel a little lazy, and I wasn't on board with the lazy ones. So I would say maybe a 7 out of 10 for this entire run if I had to rate it, uh, you know, just to give you guys a, you know, an understanding of where I, mean, where I actually feel. Because I feel like sometimes when I'm positive, people go, you must have really loved this whole run. And it's like, no, I, I didn't. You know, I, I'm very happy about this issue or the issues leading up to this and, the, and the, all the fixing of the history of Peter Parker. And I know some people don't like that. But to me, I don't think this didn't undo anything that uh, like it didn't like 
erase anyone from existence. It didn't, like, it wasn't that lazy. Um, they tried to give a reason for the stuff that happened before. So, like, the reason Norman said, oh, I, I, you know, slept with Gwen Stacy, and we had two kids together, and I raised them to be Sarah and Gabriel. Like, the reason he said that was because he was under some influence by Mephisto. So it's, again, it doesn't take that event away. It just gives a reason for it being there, a different reason than what we thought before. And those kind of things I'm okay with because those are kind of soft retcons, if you will. And I think it it works for some of these big things that a lot of fans had problems with. And I'm glad to see, you know, Nick Spencer and, and Nick Lowe and all the people in the Spider-Man office go through all that list of things people don't like and try to do their best to to bring it back to basics. So I'm looking forward now to Spider-Man moving forward, and I will definitely be reading that book monthly, and I'll be bringing Ben Riley reviews to you guys um, every month for sure. So let me know what you think of this issue, and we'll get into the free comic day issue and the Janine story coming up very soon. But i got to get my first impressions Venom video up next, so let me go get that and try to get all these edited tonight and schedule them out for the next few days so you guys have content to watch. So thank you so much for uh, you know hanging out with me, for being here. I saw the Venom movie. I'm so excited. And we'll get into my first impressions in the next video. And then in a couple days, maybe I'll do a non-spoiler review after I go see the movie a second time. And then uh, and I'll record it that night when it's more fresh in my head. And then in like a couple weeks, we'll do the full spoiler discussion for sure. So thank you. And let me know your thoughts on Amazing Spider-Man 74 slash 850, I think, or 875. Yeah, uh, crazy with the numbering stuff. But, uh, but yeah, we got more Spider-Man stuff coming up very, very soon. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.